This is Eric Peterson from the Orthopedic Institute in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This video demonstrates my technique for arthroscopic biceps tenodesis. This is an arthroscopic intraarticular technique that I developed in 2010 because I needed a simple, fast, and reliable arthroscopic method to treat superior labral, bicep tendon, and medial bicep sling pathology, all of which are extremely common causes of anterior shoulder pain and also have been shown to be very undertreated by surgeons. While I still use a traditional open sub-pec technique for complete retracted ruptures, this procedure has many inherent disadvantages and is daunting to many surgeons. Arthroscopic subacromial-based approaches, while effective, are time-consuming due to the miserable dissection of bursa and bleeding encountered over the bicipital groove. This technique that I will teach you eliminates many of the disadvantages implicit with other techniques, and I promise you it will simplify your arthroscopic shoulder experience. So here we are, lateral position, right shoulder. This is a 47-year-old woman that actually had an injury about eight months ago. She took a fall and had a non-displaced greater tuberosity fracture. <clears throat> that healed in a sling, some time in therapy, but she persisted with pain in her shoulder. So we got an MRI scan that showed this very unstable slap lesion that you can see here with frayed edges. She's also, as you can see, she's got a partial tear of her medial bicep sling that allows the bicep to partially subluxate in the groove. And that's actually the most common indication for an arthroscopic biceps tenodesis now in my practice. So in my practice, slap lesion in a 47 year old with or without the bicep sling tear is a biceps tenodesis all day long. Reason is, is I can get them moving quicker and get them to therapy quicker. And ultimately, they have less stiffness, better function, and clinical results are just better with the biceps tenodesis. So here I am making my portal for the biceps tenodesis. This is an anterior superior lateral portal, just off the anterior lateral border of the acromion. Take care to get this spinal needle perpendicular to the groove. Now here's the most important part of the whole procedure. This is an 11 blade scalpel cutting down alongside my spinal needle. <clears throat> I'll incise the rotator interval approximately and then flip the blade and now I'm distally, I'm going to go through very, very superficially just cutting through the transverse humeral ligament and I'm gonna do a far distal release and this is key to making this procedure easy and doable. I bring a coker in and I'm gonna grasp the biceps and this is also marking my fixation point so I know where the anatomic tension is. Release there to anatomize the bicep. And then we're going to retrieve it percutaneously out of the anterior superior lateral portal. We'll switch to the open portion of the video grasp the bicep out, pull it out with a coker. My assistant calls for an alice and a coker. He uses the alice over top of my coker and uses his coker to depress the skin. You can see even this patient who's slightly overweight, it's easy to expose this bicep. And I'm just gonna perform a lock, lock and crack out type whip stitch down and back with a number two non-absorbable high tensile strength suture. Now, I would advise you, when you're first starting this technique, to let the arm, take the arm out of traction. This arm is in traction. That's because I got a really good PA and he's good at delivering this bicep for me. But as you're learning this, do yourself a favor, take the arm out of traction. You'll find that you can get incredible excursion out of that bicep tendon percutaneously out of this if you do that extends out release of the transverse humeral ligament. That's one of the things that cynics will, will say regarding an arthroscopic technique versus an open sub pec is, is that you're not able to visualize distal enough in the bicep groove and pick up distal bicep and groove pathology. <clears throat> but in without traction and a good release, I can easily get five centimeters of visualization of the bicep tendon. And in somebody older with degenerative partial tearing that extends down the groove, nice. I can easily uh, perform a debridement or do extended whip stitching further down the bicep groove. So I'm just gonna tension the sutures now. I'm gonna trim 
the excess and we're ready to go back in and finish the procedure. Okay. Back in the shoulder now. I'm coming in with a super suture punch. This is for a Smith Nephew 5 millimeter helicoil knotless anchor. Right at the anatomic tension point, right about at the entrance of the bicipital groove. This is actually the hardest bone in the shoulder, and this is a screw in anchor, so I'm going to just tap it. <clears throat> Sometimes in softer bone you can get away without, but I recommend tapping it. I pull the bicep in. Notice I don't have a cannula in here. You don't want to use a cannula. You want to make sure that there's no soft tissue bridges or anything. <clears throat> that peak eyelet gets buried in. You'll notice this looks like a Orthrex swivel lock, but this is Smith Nephew's new helicoil knotless anchor. Two differences that it has is right now I've tensioned the sutures and there's an internal locking mechanism that locks these sutures in the tip of that peak eyelet. So the second mode of fixation then, other than the sutures in the peak eyelet, is the interference fixation of the anchor in the bone tunnel. Screwing in the anchor to finish fixation. The other thing I like about this anchor is you can notice that it was an open architecture design, so I get very good biologic marrow venting that can assist in healing. To complete the fixation, I'm just gonna tie several alternating half hitches to give me one more fixation point to prevent suture slippage. I added this to the procedure probably four years ago, and I have not had a suture slippage fixation failure of the bicep tendon since I've added this part in. Takes an extra 30 seconds, but I think it's uh, cheap, worthwhile insurance. After that's performed, sutures are trimmed, and it's completed. So all in all, that took, this was a real-time video, probably about only five minutes. So what I like about this is it's hyper-efficient way to arthroscopically deal with pathology. Cynics will say, that you need to bury the bicep tendon into the bone and fixate it, the tendon directly into the bone with an interference screw. And to that I would say, I've performed this arthroscopic bicep tendinesis procedure over 1200 times and the failure fixation and reoperation rate combined is less than 1%. So I'm confident in the fixation. Um, it's straightforward. It allows anatomic fixation and anatomic tension of the bicep. It can be done all arthroscopically. It doesn't add a lot of time to the case and you can efficiently and effectively treat the very common bicep tendon pathology in the shoulder. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you.